Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're so happy to have you with us here at St. Matthew's Church in Glendale, California, as we join together for our virtual worship service on this, the very first Sunday in Advent. Let us pray. God of history, so often as we enter the season of Advent, we turn our attention toward all that must be done for the coming holidays, and we fail to seek your renewing presence in our lives. Forgive us. Come to us anew, restoring joy in our hearts, so that our lives might again be a witness to your wonderful healing power and presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The new year, new church year, starts with a wake-up call. Jesus is coming again. In Scripture, Paul challenges us to wake from sleep, for we know neither the day nor the hour of Jesus' return. Also, the prophet Isaiah proclaims the day when God will gather all people together on God's holy mountain, and there will be no more war and no more suffering. Though we vigilantly watch for the promised day of salvation, we wait for what we already have. We wait for Jesus, who comes among us this day in word and in community and strengthens our faith with the promises of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We light our Advent candles as we rejoice in the name of Jesus, because the name of Jesus is the name of our salvation. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among people by which we must be saved. The name of Jesus is above every name. God has highly exalted Jesus and bestowed on Jesus the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We confess with our lips and our lives that Jesus Christ is our Lord. We confess Jesus as Lord but we do not always live faithfully under Jesus' lordship. Let us confess our sins and ask God's forgiveness for the sake of Jesus. Almighty God, we confess that we have sinned against you in our thoughts, words, and actions. We turn from your word, and we listen to the temptations of the world around us, and we follow our own corrupt desires. O oh God, have mercy upon us and forgive us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God has had mercy on us. God sent Jesus to be our Savior. Jesus died and rose for us, and through faith in Jesus' name, we have forgiveness and we have life. I announce to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among people by which we must be saved. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in the darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of Jesus be with you always, and also with you. Amen.
strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. God be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, your name is above every name. It is the name that we love. Through faith in your holy name, we have forgiveness and eternal life. As we prepare now to celebrate your birth in these busy weeks before Christmas, help us use your name often in prayer and praise, in songs and in worship. Teach us by your Spirit to share your love with others so that they too will come to know and worship you as Savior and Lord. Amen.
What then shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness, just as David also describes the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. Does this blessedness then come upon the circumcised only or upon the uncircumcised also? For we say that faith was accounted to Abraham for righteousness. How then was it accounted? While he was circumcised or uncircumcised? Not while circumcised, but while uncircumcised. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had, while still uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all those who believe, though they are uncircumcised, that righteousness might be imputed to them also. And the father of circumcision to those who not only are of the circumcision, but who also walk in the steps of the faith which our father Abraham had while still uncircumcised. For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of no effect, because the law brings about wrath. For where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore, it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him, who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. In those days Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? 
For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his offspring forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her home. Genesis 12. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed, as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him, and Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarai his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Sichem, unto the plain of Moreh, and the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram, and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord, who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west, and Hai on the east. And there he builded an altar unto the Lord, and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. And there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. And it came to pass, when he was come near to enter into Egypt, that he said unto Sarai his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Therefore it shall come to pass, when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. And it came to pass that when Abram was come into Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman, that she was very fair. The princes also of Pharaoh saw her, and commended her before Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. And he entreated Abram well for her sake, and he had sheep, and oxen, and he-asses, and men-servants, and maid-servants, and she-asses, and camels. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this that thou hast done unto me? Why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? Why saidst thou, She is my sister, so I might have taken her to me to wife? Now therefore, behold thy wife, take her, and go thy way. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away, and his wife, and all that he had. Surely it is easy to get lost in a crowd. I mean, have we not at all one time or another wondered, where's Waldo? Yet that said, 
throughout the Bible, we see over and over that our God is actually pretty good at finding someone in a crowd. A few thousand years ago, out of all the peoples of the earth, God found one particular person of faith named Abram. God found Abram, and God singled Abram out of the crowd, promising to bless him. Bless him in order that through Abraham's descendant, all the people of the earth would be blessed. All the people of the earth would be blessed by Jesus. Jesus, who was part of God's plan to bless all people from before the beginning of time. Bless all people. Bless each person. Bless you. Bless me. Bless you and bless me through Jesus. The answer to God's promise to Abram, given over a millennia before Jesus was born. And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. In you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Truly, in this world, you and I live amongst the many. Thus, more and more, we have come to think globally. More and more, we have come to truly care about what happens on the far side of this earth. Some 90 years ago, Thornton Wilder's play, Our Town, revealed just how the one can get lost in the many. In our town, Rebecca tells of a letter received by her friend Jane, a letter addressed to Jane Croffitt, the Croffitt Farm, Grover's Corners, Sutton County, New Hampshire, United States of America, continent of North America, Western Hemisphere, the Earth, the solar system, the universe, the mind of God. Can you not almost visualize Jane getting smaller and smaller and smaller as you hear each new step of that address? That strong sense of the many can be a blessing in and of itself, a blessing in and of itself when it leads us back to the one who created it all. A blessing in and of itself when it reminds us to move from the individual to the universe, and from the universe to the creator of the universe. Nonetheless, we must be careful not to lose ourselves along the way. Not to lose ourselves along the way, for the creator himself never loses us along the way. Yes, the creator of the entire universe never loses sight of you and me, even in the midst of the global crowd. Thus, while it is absolutely true that God so loved the world, it is equally true that God so loved you and God so loved me. God so loved you. That is the message to us this Advent from the call of Abram. Yes, God is intent on saving the many, but God does that one by one. One by one, through the person and work of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who in holy baptism takes hold of each one of us, takes hold of each one of us from the humility of a cradle, even to the agony of a cross. From the cradle to the cross, Jesus Christ takes hold of the one so as to bless the many. There is a Flemish Renaissance painting from the 16th century by Pieter Bruegel entitled The Census of Bethlehem. The Census of Bethlehem, which often serves as a favorite for the outside of Christmas cards. 
Rugel paints the census of Bethlehem set in his own time and place. In his own time and place, meaning a peasant village in the Netherlands in the 1500s during a taxation census. Now, it would be easy for any art historian to spend an hour or more describing each little vignette portrayed in the census of Bethlehem. Ice skaters, snowball fights, children sledding, men drinking, a castle crumbling, a church gleaming, taxpayers queuing. However, for our purposes this Advent, there is one particular vignette that I would like us all to focus on. There, near the center of this scene of snowy peasantry, we see Mary. Mary who rides a donkey into Bethlehem, led by Joseph. Mary, the expectant mother of baby Jesus. Mary, the one among the many. Mary, the one blessed to bless many, as St. Elizabeth proclaims, Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. In one of his Christmas sermons, Martin Luther once said, The gospel does not merely teach about the history of Jesus. No, the gospel enables all who believe it to receive it as their own, which is the way the gospel operates. Of what? benefit would it be to me if Jesus had been born a thousand times if I were never to hear that Jesus was born for me. People of God, the theme of our sermon series this Christmas season here at St. Matthew's is, O Holy Child of Bethlehem. Words which come to us from a much-beloved carol that many of us will no doubt sing later this season. A carol written by Pastor Philip Brooks of Holy Trinity Church in Philadelphia. A carol that Pastor Brooks wrote while on a visit to the Holy Land, not long after the end of our nation's tumultuous civil war. A carol which reminds us that the message of Christmas, peace on earth and goodwill toward all, is meant to be more than just the inscription on the inside of a Christmas card. A carol which reminds us that the Christmas message, the message that the Savior has been born, is a message for the many. A message for the many, but most importantly, a message for the one. A message for the you a message for the me. Pastor Brooks writes, O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. O come to us, abide with us, our Lord, Emmanuel. Amen.
Let us pray. Jesus, our Savior, have mercy on those who are suffering through injury and illness and loss. Watch over them and comfort them through the promises of your holy word. Lead us as we seek ways to help and serve those in need so that we might share our blessings with them. Holy child of Bethlehem, be born in us today. As we have been blessed through your birth, help us to bless others in your name. Jesus, our Savior, you were born among us in fulfillment of the promise to Abraham and Sarah that one of their descendants would be a blessing to people of all nations. By your suffering and death, you atone for the sins of the world. Holy child of Bethlehem, be born in us today. Like Abraham and Sarah, we too are blessed to be a blessing to others. Guide and protect those who carry the good news of Jesus to every nation. Jesus, our Savior, Abraham and Sarah believed your promise, and their faith was counted as righteousness. Through faith in your name, we too are counted righteous. Through your suffering, death, and resurrection, we have received the blessing of forgiveness, life, and salvation. Holy child of Bethlehem, be born in us today. We pray that the Holy Spirit will work through our acts of love and our words of witness so that others will come to know and worship you as Lord and Savior. Savior of the nations, hear our prayer and accept our grateful praise. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your gift, the tree of life was set at the heart of the earthly paradise, and the bread of life was set at the heart of your church. Let this divine nourishment bring us not to judgment, but to life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. And now may God the Father, who loved the world so much that he sent his only Son, give you grace to prepare for life eternal. May God the Son, who comes to us as Redeemer and Judge, reveal to you the path from darkness to light. May God the Holy Spirit by whose working Mary conceived the Christ, help you bear the fruits of holiness and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.